fellas, we finally made it. 2020 is over, so it's time to talk about our favorite games of the year. I started a tradition in 2018 to ask my friends to rank their favorite games of the year. In case you're wondering, my favorite game of 2018 was Celeste. My favorite game of 2019 was Ace Combat 7. And my top game of the decade was Kerbal Space Program. Today, I'm listing off the best games that I played in 2020. If I played it this year, it qualifies. Doesn't matter if it came out in 2020 or 1998. Let's begin the countdown. Star Wars Squadrons is the best Star Wars flight game since Rogue Leader. It captures the exhilarating action and grand scope of a Star Wars battle. Just sitting in these detailed cockpits is worth the price of admission alone. They really nail the authenticity of a Star Wars movie, both visually and in gameplay. You have to manage your power between the engines, weapons, and shields. You can focus your shields on the back or front of the spacecraft, and each ship has a different role in battle, which encourages team play. My only gripe is that they're only original trilogy era battles. I would have loved to see a Naboo fighter or a Resistance era bomber, but this could be added with future DLC updates. If you're a Star Wars fan and have a VR headset, you gotta play this. Got him. Apex Legends is a game where you lose a lot. We're all familiar with the Battle Royale formula. You know, PUBG, Fortnite, Call of Duty's Warzone. You drop from an airplane and fight to the death in these big arenas that gradually get smaller. Apex stands out to me because instead of playing as generic avatars, you choose from a roster of diverse characters. My favorite guy is Crypto. He has a drone that you can fly around and spot enemies with. Sometimes it's hard to run when I'm watching your every move. You can also fly around and pick up banners from fallen teammates in order to revive them. There are these jump towers and zip lines that make it easier to get around the map, and the ping system makes it so that you never have to do voice chat. Shall we head this way? Supply bin here. Inevitably, you will die to people who are better than you, and that's when you have to set your own personal goals. If you survive longer than five minutes, that's a win. If you land a hit on something, that's also a win. In the rare instance that someone actually does something good, it feels amazing. Crimson Skies has everything. It's steampunk, it's cheesy, and it has one-liners. Next time, think twice before climbing into that cockpit. Escaping? I don't think so. Go find some direction in your life. Time for a little payback. Stop wasting my time. Is that the best you can do? Smoked him like a fine panatella. My favorite part is that you can land your plane and hop into an AA gun of an airship or a rocket launcher from a turret. You're constantly scrambling to dispatch foes with all these different weapons, and it keeps the gameplay fresh. Mario Kart Live is a technological wonder. A couple of years ago, I stuck a live camera on my Air Hogs toy and drove that around my house and thought that was cool. This takes things to a whole nother level. For those who are kids at heart, making tracks around your house is a blast. For me, the technology that makes this thing work is miraculous. Mario bounces up and down and reacts to crashes. The way the car can tell where it is on the track without a frame of reference is very impressive. There's an assist feature that keeps the car on the track, and if you take your hands off the controls, look! It's a self-driving car. Nintendo sold us a self-driving car, guys. Kind of. Among Us. It's Among Us, come on. If I didn't put this on my list, my friends would probably be a little upset. Spyro the Dragon is a simple and delightful collectathon. I know there's a remaster out there, but I played the original versions, and I gotta say, this game holds up really well. There's a lot of clever tricks that make it run so well on a PlayStation 1, and I really like that they foregoed full motion video cutscenes in favor of in-engine animation. Technical impressions aside, the game has a lot of personality, and they totally nailed the feel of controlling a quadrupedal dragon. There are these awesome flying segments where you get to find the perfect route to nab all the collectibles within a time limit, which is kind of like Pilot Wing 64. If you like Banjo-Kazooie, you'll definitely have a good time with Spyro the Dragon. All three of them, in fact. Also, the music is by Stuart Copeland, lead drummer of the police. The music is great.
Yes! In a good racing game, speed equates to difficulty. The faster everyone is going, the harder it is to keep your vehicle in control. Compare Mario Kart 50cc and 200cc, and yeah, it is significantly harder to keep your kart in control. Then there's F-Zero GX. This is the Dark Souls of racing games. F-Zero pushes the envelope of what humans are capable of. It demands instant reflexes and laser focus. If you get distracted for a fraction of a second during a race, say goodbye to your entire career. Of course! Retire. Playing F-Zero is like the faster parts of Sonic the Hedgehog all the time. It puts you in a meditative state where nothing exists except you and the game, and then BAM, it's over. Both of these games were made by Sega. For those of you who don't know, playing an Uncharted game is like playing a summer blockbuster with likable characters, Indiana Jones style plots, and epic action sequences. I've played Uncharted 1 through 4 before, and it wasn't until I played them again with my roommates as backseat gamers that I realized just how fun it is to play these games with an audience. Oh my god, Rick. I highly recommend playing Uncharted with an audience. All of the Naughty Dog games are great for backseat gamers. What? They all just <laughs> Okay. No, he's dead. That man is dead. Yeah, dead. Real dead. Oh Hold my on. god. Hold on. There he is. Swimming <laughs> back. He's, he's fine. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my oh god! god. Oh. Alright, if it's sparking that much, nothing's gonna work in there. <laughs> what about the big red switch, Matt? What about that? <laughs> oh. You can benefit from things like helpful commentary. Wait, don't get out, don't get out, wait here, wait, wait, yeah, go to your right side, go, go, go in and try to get a sniper. Oh, the guy in the bottom, kill the guy in the bottom first. Yeah, go to your right side, go, did they even walk to the left? Or left, left thing? Oh my goodness. This is so hard, what the heck? <sighs> Animal Crossing New Horizons is a game that I played for about two weeks and then put down. So why is it on my list? Turns out my mom and my sister ended up playing it far more than I did. They essentially overhauled my village, so I decided to invite them to share their thoughts. This is my living room with my frozen flooring and my frozen walls. Okay. Where did you get them from? I got them from making snow boys, who I now despise. <laughs> <gasps> Look at that! Three hours, ten minutes, eighteen seconds. You this is fantastic! <gasps> wow. Yes. <laughs> Oh, he's all dressed up. He looks so handsome. This is sort of my springtime winter collage. So I was happy about the whole frozen world, the DIYs. It's fun. But snow boys are ridiculous, and I don't enjoy building them. They're frustrating and stressful. That's That does not fit in with the Animal Crossing. It doesn't fit in. I do Animal Crossing to not be stressed. Down here is my shell area. I collected a lot of shells for this. Swimming is my favorite part. Look how happy I am. Look at that. Look at that. Way happier than making snow boys. Way happier than making snow boys. Well, what, what do you guys like about Animal Crossing? I think it's a fabulous escape from COVID. Yes. It's your own little island. You can be very creative. It's very satisfying to earn money and set up your house and your garden. It's very relaxing. <laughs> okay. Right, Thanks for giving us your thoughts on Animal Crossing. Yeah. And that's it. Shadow of the Colossus. This is a game that every action adventure fan should play at least once. It's about a guy who takes his horse and a deceased girl to a forbidden land and makes a deal with a disembodied voice to kill 16 colossi in order to bring her back to life. Stuff like this happens to me all the time. When the game first released in 2005, it was very impressive for the time with its seamless world. The 2018 remaster really brings things to the next level with a visual overhaul and some sublime audio design. The story sets the stage for some of the most impressive boss fights I have ever seen. It's interesting because the more you win, the more you feel bad about killing these giants who did nothing wrong and are just sitting in these prisons. 
Instead of making you feel like a skilled warrior, Shadow of the Colossus makes you feel like you're out of control. The beast will shake you around and you're always holding on for dear life. In a way, it's a 2020 simulator. What I liked about The Last of Us 2 is that it sucked me into this world and characters just like the first game did. I remember the first time I played The Last of Us on my brother's PS4. The violence was so visceral, and I got really invested in the characters. I won't let you down with this. Part 2 was easily my most anticipated game of 2020, and it thoroughly exceeded my expectations. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about this game, but at the end of the day, I just have to stay true to my experience and what I thought of the game. With that out of the way, The Last of Us Part 2 is undeniably masterfully crafted. The graphics, the gameplay, the acting, the sound effects, it's all top tier stuff. The environments are so unbelievably detailed that at a certain point, I stopped noticing the minor details. I got used to this level of granularity and became so immersed that I could smell it. Like the original, the plot is very bleak, but there are these glimpses of light that keep you invested. I won't go into detail for spoiler reasons, but I will say that in my opinion, it was a lot of fun trying to predict what would happen next and being completely blown away by some of the action sequences and plot twists. Abby was my favorite character, which might seem like a hot take because of something that she does that I will not spoil. Don't get me wrong, it was not easy seeing things from her side at first, but I came around not just because of her redemption arc. We're gonna have to fight to get out of this, okay? We don't let anybody stop us, yeah? but also because of her gameplay. If Ellie is Solid Snake, sneaking around and picking people off one by one, Abby is Leon from Resident Evil. Her arsenal is much more explosive, and she has access to a lot more ammo, making her more of a combat-oriented character than a stealth-oriented character. It all came together during this horrific boss fight that really sealed the deal. I also really liked the characters Owen and Dina. They stood out from the rest because they were both good people who were worth fighting for. So yeah, if you like The Last of Us, I highly recommend this game. Also play it with an audience, it's super fun. Well, those are my top games of 2020. I want to hear what your top games are in the comments. That's all for this episode, thanks for watching.